coming to you from Grants Pass, Oregon. The last time I had my GoPro running was actually somewhere in California and I was having problems with my GoPro and the mount. Looks like the sticky pad on the chin mount came uh, unglued. I was riding down the road kind of holding up the GoPro for a little while and then all of a sudden I felt something thunk into my lap and the whole glue and everything the sticky 3m sticky pad actually came detached and it came detached from the chin mount side not the side that I actually mounted on my helmet which I thought was kind of strange so unfortunately without having my GoPro or no, no other way to mount it to the bike I missed the whole second day of travel which was really nice because I got up into uh, Mount Shasta I'll put some pictures up so you can kind of see Mount Shasta a little bit but uh, some really great riding up that way I looked things up a little bit online found that the problem that I had with chin mounts is not uncommon and on this Shoei Neotech 3 helmet the way that's designed they had to make the the chin mount actually like fairly small compared to the other chin mounts I've had and I got thinking this, that the reason it probably came off maybe due to the smaller surface area so I found a guy that kept advertising his motor rads mount that's actually what I have right now I'll show show you what that looks like so I'm out today just kind of seeing how it works it's the first time I've used the motor rads mount mini I think it's called and it fits very nicely on the Neotech 3 there's just enough space for it there so today I'm basically just coming out for what an hour or two to check out this GoPro mount and just to ride around this is an absolutely beautiful area there's a lot of really neat stuff here uh, a lot of really good motorcycle riding I use the Calimoto app to create like a round trip random thing which is sort of what I've done today I rented a BMW R1250RT. I don't know what year, but it's fairly recent. It has this huge dash there. Uh, I love the adjustable windshield, absolutely brilliant. There's a lot of wind protection on the sides, the legs. Very, very impressed by that. The suspension is very comfortable for touring. The pan ears on this, the saddlebags are very spacious. Uh, it's got a lot of technology on it. it. Has adaptive cruise control. That is the other thing that I absolutely love. Where it'll keep the following distance behind a vehicle automatically for you. There's a very nice long river here called the Rogue River see there there's a lot of really cool uh, river type recreation here this Beamer it has heated grips and a heated seat this is my first time with heated grips and they really really are very nice I actually don't even have them turned on right now I just don't need to but they are great the heated seat uh, I think my butt was so numb that I didn't feel it. I used it on the ride up. Barely noticed it. Everything on this bike is keyless. You can lock and unlock the steering column, any of the storage compartments. You can lock those just with a button. So a very, very nice bike for touring. 
the quick shifter just is uh, is not very smooth, especially in the lower gears. <laughs> I feel like this boxer engine is like is like a tractor engine, especially when you're in the lower RPMs. And this is a big bike. You can tell it's heavy. It's it. I want to say it's close to 650 pounds or so, and it feels every bit of that to me, especially when it when you're stopped. It's very wide. The front end just looks enormous. The, one of the advantages of that is you get a you get a tons of lights on the front. So at night this thing lights up really nicely. Judging by the smell there, that looks like it might be a cannabis farm. Or... Yeah, this quick shifter at the higher gears. It's uh, just as smooth as you would expect. Shifting into second gear and usually third gear is a pretty jarring experience. And then going into the rest of the gears, you know, fourth, fifth, and sixth, pretty smooth. The other thing I'm doing on this little ride today is I'm testing out some some of those uh, biking underwear. They go under your under your trousers and they have the gel pads in them. I thought this seat gets uh, really really uncomfortable after about an hour or so. So I thought I'd try some. They're not uh, they're definitely not working as as well as I had hoped. Let's see how things go. Usually after about three hours, two to three hours on this, I was finding it getting kind of unbearable. But, you know you don't have a choice, so you have to get where you're going, so you just kind of, it's like you just mentally try to block it out. And then I found, usually by about the, the four to five hour mark, everything just goes numb, and you don't care anymore. This southern Oregon area, and I believe for probably most of the state of Oregon, is they have some really good, really great place for outdoor activities. Some amazing hiking, and they have tons and tons of trails that I believe can be used by off-road vehicles, you know, dirt bikes, UTVs. I see a lot of those around. So there's a lot of fun to be had here. Like I said, the kayaking and rafting on the river. So the other thing with this BMW that I read about recently was it has linked braking, which I've never had before. And I didn't even really notice it. So I guess it's doing a pretty good job, right? So if you, if you just use the front brake for example, it will automatically apply the rear brake for you. So yeah, Calimoto has definitely got us on the winding roads for a while now. So I tried using the BMW Motor Rad app, which gives you navigation. You have to use the app to get navigation on this BMW. And you can get the map to come up full screen on this dash, which is certainly quite nice. But you can't do it without your, your phone connecting to the bike through Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. a marijuana farm there. There's a very, very strong smell of it. Uh, so the navigation, yeah, you can pop it up on the screen. The thing that I didn't like was you have to leave your phone in the navigation mode and you can't lock the screen or disconnects the navigation or disconnects the map from the bike. So that was pretty frustrating. I mean, I had it working fine, but the issue I was running into was 
I went out on a ride and I wanted to stop and take some photos and little video clips with my phone and every time I you take my phone out and go to the camera it takes the the BMW app out of navigation mode so I take a picture and then when I get back on the bike I had to go back to the BMW app and put it back into navigation mode uh, so there was a few times where it required me to reconnect to like white Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or something it was kind of funny when I was on the way up here the first day using the bike I couldn't figure out how to get the like when there's a menu option right you can change the screen and there's a lot of menu options you have and I couldn't figure out how to get the get the move the options to the right or the left I'm like I know there's a there's got to be some magic button somewhere that moves it right and left I could not figure it out until I stopped I think I stopped for the night the first night or stopped somewhere for a break I looked it up on YouTube of how to do it and found there's a wheel here that controls things like volume and thing and you just notch the wheel to the left or right to move once finding that out I found it to be a quite an effective control setup here the BMW app it was kind of cool other than the navigation part it was kind of cool that you could um, you could see a lot of information about the bike like you could see how much fuel is in there you could check the tire pressures you can look at service you know service history service intervals and stuff that's another part I think where this bike really excels at touring is the range you know most of the bikes I've had or I'll say all the bikes I've had you fill them up and you you're lucky to get 200 miles out of a tank of gas and this thing you fill it up and it's telling you you've got over 300 miles to go and that's pretty impressive uh, there is a huge mountain that I just noticed with snow all over the top off to my left <laughs> so I have heard that, there it is, I've heard that Mount Hood is visible from here on a clear day. So I'm going to guess that that's Mount Hood and I will try to verify that at some point. So I think I'm going to take back some of what I said earlier about the gel padded cycling shorts or underwear. Uh, earlier I, I said I don't think they're working but I've been gone for a while now and it, it's not as bad as I thought it would be so perhaps they are working a little bit Some kind of winery or at least a vineyard there Oregon uh, there are lots and lots of wineries at least in the southern part lots and lots and lots and lots and this kind of this time of year they a lot of them start to close or limit their hours greatly but there's some really amazing wineries some of these ones you can go to you can have lunch dinner everything I mean they, they got full kitchens get some really nice food I think the, uh, the climate and the soil and everything out here is very conducive for growing the right type of grapes for wine and hard ciders seems to be really taken off too I would not be disappointed if there was a fuel station out here somewhere Oh, no gas? Okay. No gas. More grapes. It's 
seems like anywhere that's flat here they're either growing grapes or marijuana all right so this railroad crossing is the kind where you have to stop and you actually have to watch to make sure nothing's coming I guess they don't have a light or nothing Yeah, it's the thing with the Kalimoto when you're navigating. At the top of the screen, it doesn't give you a road name. So once you get really close to where you're trying to, where it wants you to turn, you, like you don't know what the road name is or anything. You just, there's gas. Yeah, lots of camping out here too. Campgrounds everywhere. So camping, fishing, motor biking, mountain biking, road biking, rafting, hiking. It is pretty much anything you can think of that's an outdoor activity. Yeah, so I just fill it up with fuel. And as you can probably see right here, I got 320 miles of range now. Like that. For a, a fairly large engine, well, I mean a 1250 cc it is a large engine. It gets quite good fuel economy. little camp spot along the river I have found that everywhere that I've been in Oregon from the southern part here around the Grants Pass area up through Portland there's lots and lots of really nice places to eat and drink they got a lot of really good food lots and lots of different options well, my GoPro hasn't fallen off, so that's a good sign. Hopefully this new Moto Rads mount works out well. Let's say this Neotech 3 helmet, the front of it, it's kind of tricky to find a place to mount a chunkier chin mount. But this Moto Rads thin fits on there really nicely, actually. Coming into the downtown area here. You'll see just up ahead here. I think Grants Pass is one of the strangest intersections I've ever seen. So they have this separated here. And it's like two lanes have to stop while the other two lanes go. It's just a very different way of doing things. Coming right into the downtown Grants Pass. And I have to make a left on a road whose name I don't know. That's the thing about Calimoto. I wonder if there's a way to change that. Alright, well, I'm just about back. Thanks for hanging out with me today on our little ride around Grants Pass and wherever we were in southern Oregon. So, I will catch you all later.